Let's have a look at how to make image-to-image -image animations using Stable Diffusion. We will also be using Premiere Pro to export the frames for the animation and After Effects for generating in-betweens. Let's begin by importing our video file in Adobe Premiere. Now right-click the clip and select New Sequence from Clip. Right-click the sequence and go to Sequence Settings. Make sure the aspect ratio of your sequence is square. If your subject is moving outside the boundaries of the sequence, move the clip so that it fits within. Now we're going to export the sequence of images. Go to File, Export, Media. Select PNG and PNG Sequence as your format. Choose a location for your sequence that you can easily find later on. Change the resolution of your export to be 512 by 512. This is a good base resolution for image to image. Now we need to decide a frame rate for our animation. We want to export the animation at a lower frame rate to make it easier to work with. I will be using 12 frames per second. At a later point, we will generate in-between frames to bring the animation back to its original frame rate. Go ahead and export the sequence. When you're done, export the sequence to a new folder with the same frame rate as before, but this time at full resolution. We will use the full resolution at a later point when generating in-betweens. If you want to use the same settings as me, you will need to check this box in the Stable Diffusion settings. This will give us greater control over the amount of steps used. We are going to be using Noise Multiplier and Color Correction for image to image. If you want these in your quick settings, add the following values to the quick settings list. If your Noise Multiplier doesn't let you go all the way down to zero, right click the element and inspect it. Here you can set the minimum and maximum values. Remember to also do this for the text box. Ok, now we can get to work. Take one frame and pull it into image to image. Now we need to write a prompt to change this into a drawn art style. I have already prepared my prompts in advance. Under resize mode, Make sure you're not using the latent upscale. The latent upscale will add a lot of blur to the output image. Lower the sampling steps to about 12. Choose the sampling method you like. I'm going to increase the width and height of my image a bit. This will let the image generate a bit more detail. We want the denoising strength to be very low, about 0.3. This is to make sure the output image doesn't change the pose of the subject. With such a low denoising strength, we want a really high CFG scale to make sure the style of the image actually changes. If we go ahead and generate four images at this point, we will see that the four images have slightly different style. This is because the seed adds a lot of extra detail to every image. This is what usually makes image-to-image -image animations look like they're flickering a lot. To get rid of this flickering and make the animation smoother, we're gonna lower the noise multiplier for image-to-image -to, -image to zero. This will remove the impact of the seed on the image altogether. You can see that these four images look exactly the same. We're also going to apply color correction to the image to image. This is gonna make the output image match the original better in terms of color. Make sure batch count is set to one. Head over to the batch tab and copy and paste the path to your image folder into the input. For the output folder, add a new name. I'm going to consider this the first of many passes in which the image is manipulated by stable diffusion. In each pass, the image is going to be pulled further from the original and closer towards the prompt. 
You can technically make as many passes as you want, using the last pass as the input for the next one. When making your later passes, feel free to change the settings. Make the denoising strength higher to allow the image to change more. You can also increase the image noise at this point to generate more details back into the image. Just be aware that this might add flickering to the final animation. A general rule of thumb is that the more you want the subject to change from the original, the more flickering will most likely occur. Now that all the passes has finished generating, let's head into After Effects. Let's begin by importing the original full-size animation that we exported from Premiere. Select the first image of the sequence and make sure Import as Sequence is selected. Right-click the footage and select Interpret Footage Main. Here, we're gonna tell After Effects that this footage is actually at its original frame rate. In my case, 60 FPS. Let's go ahead and make a composition using the footage. Right click the composition and change the settings. We want the size of this composition to be the same as the first pass we made in Stable Diffusion. I'm gonna make this 640. You can see that the composition is now smaller than the footage. Right click the layer and go to Transform fit to comp. If you have another pass with another resolution, add another composition and change the scale to match that pass. Again, make sure the footage fits the composition. Now we can go ahead and import our passes in the same way. I recommend renaming the passes to keep track of them. Remember to interpret your passes at the original frame rate, just like we did with the original clip. Now, for each pass you want to export as an animation, make a new composition using that pass. We also need to extend the duration of these compositions. I will have 5 in between frames, so I make the compositions 5 times longer. Here we can see the resulting animation from Stable Diffusion. It's already quite good, but we can make it even smoother by generating in-betweens. Drag in the original footage and make sure it's the same resolution as the pass you're working with. Add this as a new layer on top of the pass. Enable time remapping for both layers. Now let's add an effect called Time Warp to the original footage. This is how we're going to be generating in-betweens. You can see we have a bunch of options for the Time Warp effect. We won't be needing the source crops, motion blur and weighting. The speed value represents the proportion between the original frame rate and the working frame rate. My working frame rate were 12 frames per second, a fifth of 60 frames per second. So I'm going to input 20, for 20%. We can see already that this is generating in-between frames, pushing and pulling pixels to try to smooth out the animation. I recommend playing around with the global smoothing and the block size to make sure the image doesn't tear up. We can also set the layer's quality to bicubic if we want more precision. Other than that, Play around with the settings and see what works for you. When we're happy with the in-between frames generated, we can go ahead and set the warp layer to the layer beneath, the pass. This is going to push and pull the pass layer instead. And there we are. We now have in-between frames for our animation. There is another very interesting setting you can play around with. It's called Build from One Image. This setting will make it so that the image doesn't get blurred and just pushes the image without fading between frames. Whether you want to use Build from One Image is very much up to personal preference. Try both. And that is how we can make stable image-to-image -image animations. Now, there are still limits to what we can do with this. The quicker the subject moves, 
the harder it is for image to image to generate good frames. And also, the more we want to change on the subject, like hair color and clothes, the more flickering and chaos will be added to the final animation. I might do another tutorial in the future looking at how to use eBSynth and how it can be implemented into this pipeline. But for now, thanks for watching!